Hello guys and welcome to Steve Knows. What a week it has been. There have been some golden nuggets dropped left, right and center. Like two new headset releases, more findings around Quest Cloud Gaming, new Quest features and lots of new games coming soon and decent ones at that. Not these tech demos, some decent games. This is also the last week to enter the $100 Quest Store giveaway so you can buy some games. So please subscribe, enter that down below in the description and let's get into this. That's enough chin wagging. Let's get started. So starting off with something that I'm so excited for, the PlayStation VR has recently been confirmed. Its release date is coming early 2023, which is sooner than actually I was expecting after they were unsure about whether or not they wanted to release it because there were not enough PlayStation 5s out in the wild. There were rumors that it would be later. So I know it wasn't going to be 2022, but early 2023 is great. I was expecting end of the year or perhaps the year after. And especially since there are more headsets coming out before that, which I will touch on later on in the video. With the recent PlayStation 5 price hike as well, I'm more wary of the official price of the PlayStation VR 2. I honestly thought it was going to be about $500 and now I'm expecting probably around $600 since the Quest had a price hike as well, and now the PlayStation 5 has. So let me know your thoughts, what you think the price is going to be. And following on from that, there was also a post on Capcom's website talking about the Tokyo Game Show. In it, you can go and play a section of Resident Evil 8 inside Dimitri's Castle, but on the PlayStation VR 2 at the event. So you can play Resi 8 in VR. I did translate the post because it was in Japanese and it said that there was a you'll be playing a section which is kind of common for most games at these events because either they're not fully developed yet or they want to time box a play session so each person can get in and play otherwise you could spend forever playing this in VR. But my goodness between now and March next year we're going to be spending so much on VR because at the end of this video you're going to see there's so many great games there's so much new tech it's time to start rationing our meals I think. So the Zuck was recently on Joe Rogan's podcast and spent three hours talking, which is an amazing battery life for such an advanced robot. Like an identity for that person on file. During this talk, there were some nuggets dropped and first out of the gate, a funny one is Rogan saying that Oculus was amazing and the Zuck just holding back to say, meta, <laughs> Met meta. Uh, your new Oculus is awesome. It's very impressive. Yeah, it's very cool. I guess that marketing is not going too well. The Zuck also said that their new headset will be releasing in October. I'm not sure if you meant to say that, but he did, which is really soon. And following the trend of all the other headsets and the Kinect events where they're placed, we could have guessed that this was going to come during that period, but it's nice to have some confirmation. That's six weeks of saving for the premium device, plus anything else that they drop, which I'll talk about later on in the video. Zuck was also listing cool things that he expects to be coming to the platform. One of them was leg tracking using AI modeling, predictive modeling to track your legs in virtual reality. This had been spoken about before in passing and even a university managed to do full body tracking using inside out cameras. So it seems in the future, this is something that we can expect. We can kick in game, maybe do some leg raises in some fitness titles as well, or maybe some legs on our meta avatars. Finally, to add to the Cambria news, Meta posted on Twitter a website called Visit Cambria CA because Cambria is a coastal location in California and Meta have always used coastal locations for the code names of their hardware. So they posted this and you can go on it and book a trip to Cambria if you're keen. Now, I found that rather amusing. Someone has a sense of humor out there. Meta accounts are also now here if you hadn't noticed. They dropped on the 23rd of August, so now you no longer need to link your Facebook account to your headset, which is a nice touch, allowing you to separate your online VR presence, where you act like a little sh to your real world presence, where you also act like a little sh Once you log into your headset, you will be prompted with the following steps, and I wonder how many people clicked log in with Facebook to make a meta account. I've, if they did, I kind of find that slightly ironic, but I suppose not everybody cares about this sort of thing. Also, some people can now delete their Facebook accounts, which they created for VR, which is a whoop whoop. But I'm also on the fence if this is a win or not for the community, because Facebook, they, they could have turned Facebook accounts into meta accounts perhaps, but they did separate them. I want to know whether that was a community decision or a technical one. Sadly, it's Bradley has come out with another statement. This guy is on fire, always. This time around is something that we spoke about a long time back, actually. It was a dongle for wireless PC VR connectivity to connect your Quest to your PCs to play PC VR games. And I think it was called the AirBridge at that point in time. But Steve, I don't own a gaming PC. Well, that's where the rumors come in. The dongle is to utilize the Avalanche software, which is Meta's cloud VR gaming software. 
or platform, let's call it a platform. So we saw leaks a while back where someone was able to connect and boot up Asgard's Wrath on their quest. I say saw, someone posted this or claimed this on Reddit as well as Bradley as well, one of his sources. So the dongle was in partnership with D-Link who have experience in creating these hardware products. So this is a USB device with Wi-Fi standard 802.11ax support, which connects via a five gigahertz connection. But the computer you wish to stream content from, if you're using the cloud services, will require a wired connection to the router. That's likely for stability and connectivity because cloud gaming can be very unstable and a wired connection is best for that. So now that connect event is looking even more tasty as well. New hardware and potential for a cloud VR platform which I think it kind of makes sense to provide that sort of platform when releasing a professional device. It just seems like a service that would be quite important for that vision. This isn't confirmed though, but Bradley sources have not been too far wrong thus far. And we've also seen pictures and patents for this kind of device. But hopefully, hopefully this is legit. It makes sense to me, fingers crossed. Time for some quick fire news now, some games and some updates. There's only a few this week, but it's a good few. We're going quality, not quantity. So The Walking Dead just dropped some official gameplay because it's Gamescom and the game doesn't look as buttery as the initial video we saw, which I think, oh, that's kind of upsetting. But no, it still looks fantastic. The gameplay looks even more brutal, even more intense. And there are even videos of the experience at Gamescom. So you can see it firsthand what it looks like because it's being cast to a TV and it looks incredible. Better guns, more abundant environments. So I'm excited to get my head in this game. And I'll link game attack video down below in the description. It's a great one to watch. Uh, it looks more action focused than before because we've now adjusted to the apocalypse. And I mean that in real life as well as VR. What is going on right now? And speaking of VR action, Hellsweeper named fittingly with how violent and intense and gory the gameplay looks. This is from the legendary developers who made Sorrento. So this is coming to the Oculus Quest later this year, 2022. There's so many good games incoming, so many, but this looks special. It has amazing physics. The enemy design looks brilliant. The abilities look great. And the just overall style of it, it's clear that they have put so much effort into creating this game. And I hope this can become a series if it plays as well as it looks. I've seen people play the alpha and they've said nothing but praise. I'm so excited for this game and I'm glad I don't have to wait too long now to play it. There is also a PC VR exclusive that's now coming to the Quest, Everslort Invasion. This has been announced to be coming to the Quest early 2023. Fast Travel Games are bringing this one and it's a stripped back version, I think, for the weaker hardware. And this can be played cooperatively or single player where you will fend off hordes of enemies. And the idea of a hook shot gets me so excited. I've recently been playing Halo Infinite and it's got a hook shot and it's just so much fun. It adds another dimension to the way that you can traverse and play. So I'm excited to try that one and you can also now get married as a taco bell in the metaverse apparently <laughs> shame this wasn't available last month i could have got married in that that would have been cool i'm not sure the missus would have been would have been up for it or enjoyed it as much as i would have <laughs> And then this is coming in mid-September. No words can describe this one. Just bask in this. Let me put a slow zoom and some epic music and just enjoy this for a second. So that's it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. Please subscribe. It's such a small deed and it helps me massively spread the word of VR and continue to do what I love. So join the giveaway. I hope you have a great week. Happy gaming, guys. Good day. Good day.